You want to do something this year? You want something better than it's been? Well, it's time to make some changes. We're not going to sit around and wait for it to come. Progress doesn't happen through passiveness and pity. This is the year we take matters into our own hands. This is the year we make our resolutions, our routines. This is the year we get what we want. Consistency is crucial for cultivating change. Diligence makes the difference in our decisions and direction. Persistence is the power that propels us toward our purpose. Habits give us a handle to make headway towards our hopes. Stamina is the secret of all sustainable success. And repetition is the recipe, the rhythm, the requirement. Are you ready to achieve and accomplish this year? Are you willing to put in the work it's gonna take? Set the pattern, be patient, practice, Persist. Don't get discouraged. Don't get down. Don't get defeated. This is how you get it. Progress on purpose. All right. Hi. Hey, thank you so much for coming out to church. I know it's kind of a tough day. You know, it's New Year's Day and so many people stayed up late last night, but just really appreciate the effort. And I want to welcome everybody who's watching us online. Maybe you couldn't make it up, but you're watching it anyway, and that's a good idea. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, before I start, I, you know what, uh, Lori, uh, Lori, will you stand where, uh, yeah, will you just stand? Listen, I, I want to just stay, stay there standing for a second. Lori was in Times Square last night, past midnight, watching the ball drop, and she's in church today. Let's give her a hand, huh? I guess you can make it here if you want to, huh? Yeah. Uh, that, is, that is fantastic. That's great. Uh, you know what? It is New Year's, and I hear we're, we're all kind of in the habit of just saying, you know, Happy New Year. And what we're saying is, I hope that this year is better than last year, and I hope that this is a great year for you. And I genuinely hope for every single one of us that this is going to be a better year than 2016 was. And maybe for many of us, 2016 was a great year. That's awesome. I hope that this year is the best year that you have ever had. And I think we... We all kind of choose New Year's Day to kind of, you know, we, we put up with the things that we didn't accomplish. We put up with the things that we failed at, maybe, or things we wanted to do last year and we didn't really make it. And we kind of, we kind of say, well, you know, New Year's, New Year's is a good restart. New Year's is a good time that I'm going to let it go here for a few months, but as soon as New Year's comes, I'm going to hit it again. I'm going to make some goals. I'm going to do some things that I didn't accomplish last year that I want to bring change to my life. And I think that most of us, there are areas in our life that we want to see change happen. We really do. And, and not that we're not satisfied on the inside. I, I think we can live with a, with a satisfaction on the inside, especially with a relationship with God, but an unsettledness on the outside, an unsettledness that I want to accomplish things in my life that I haven't before. And I think for most of us, it's, I'm stealing this a little bit from Pastor Andy Stanley, and he says, it's kind of like living in the land of Ur. We, we all want to be better next year. We want to be happier. We want to be richer. We want to be, you know, closer in our relationships. And, and I think that we all want these things that we want to be bigger, better, you know, this year than we were last year. But not in comparison to other people. It's not what it is. You know, hopefully, you know, this last year you've learned at one of our series here that you learned that, you know, there's no win in comparison and it, it, we just can't do that. But uh, we, this land of Ur that we want to live in, it's for ourselves. Don't you want to be better this year than you were last year? Don't you want to be smarter this year than last year? Don't you want to accomplish things in your life this year that you didn't do last year? And I think most of us do. I mean, there's things that we really do want to accomplish and we want to, we want to complete and we want to be better in our lives. But here's the deal. It doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't. Just because it's a new year doesn't mean that, man, I'm just thrilled because, boy, at the end of this year, I'm going to be happier, bigger, better, stronger, all that. You know, I'm just going to, I'm going to be healthier at the end of this year because somehow I want to be. And so by the end of this year, I'm going to be, you know, happier, healthier, and richer and all that. But time doesn't make it happen. I mean, think about it. Let's be honest with ourselves. This whole series can change our life if we're honest with ourselves. And I think every one of us, 
look back at certain areas of our life and we wonder, why am I the same as I was five years ago? Think about your life. There are things in your life that you wanted to be different five years ago. But five years have went by and you look at yourself honestly today and I'm no different. I'm not more spiritual. I'm not closer to God. I don't handle my money any better. I don't have closer relationships. You know, I haven't kicked this addiction in my life. You know, I'm not in better health than I was five years. But I wanted to be five years ago. And just the fact that time goes by, just the fact that it's a new year and we say, this is the year. The year can go by and it's this is the year doesn't make the difference. Time going by doesn't make the difference. We all find ourselves in a place, every one of us at one area or more in our life, we find ourselves that, you know what, it's not working. It's, it's like I'm not any better than I was before. And this is the same stuff that I've went through before. And you know what, I, I think that we find ourselves sometimes in a situation where I haven't grown. I haven't changed. I'm the same. I'm not happy about it, but I'm the same. And I, I know there's a portion in the Bible that just reminds me of this so much of our, of our lives, where the writer of Hebrews, he's, he's writing to the church, and this is what he says, and I, and I think it's sobering. He says, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you. Why? Because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone else to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. And I I think this is a, a spiritual picture of many of us, but I think it can be a picture of our lives in so many ways. That by this time, you should be better in that area. By this time in your life, you should have made some progress. By this time in your life, you should be closer to God. You should be able to hear his voice. You should be able to follow God better by this time. But you know what? You haven't matured. You haven't matured. You're not ready to go on. You're stuck in the same spot you were before. And I know there are areas in my life that are like that. I'm stuck in the same spot I was before. I look back over the past I go, I remember five years ago, I wanted to improve in this area of my life. But I, you know what? I should have a handle on this by now. There are things in our lives that we should, we should have accomplished by now. We should have made it here by now. We, we should have met our goals by now. But we're not. We're in the same place that we were before. And, and, and the big question is why? I mean, each one of us... Has, Why, Kevin, why are you in the same spot that you were before? How come I'm not closer to God than I was last year or the year before? Why do I look back? I was closer to God five years ago than I am today. I I had a better handle on my money five years ago than I do today. I had better relationship. Like, why, why does this happen? It's certainly not because we don't want it to. Every one of us want things better in our life. We do. Every one of us, I believe, want to be closer to God. I believe every one of us want closer relationships. Every one of us want to handle these addictions or these problems, these difficulties in our life, these bad habits. Every one of us want. It's not because we don't want to, and we, we genuinely want to. And it's not because we haven't made these resolutions before. We've all made resolutions before. Maybe we didn't call them resolutions. Maybe we didn't even wait till New Year's to do it. But we have all in the past, probably even last year, you know, I'm going to get healthier. We made a commitment to ourselves. I'm going to get healthier. I'm going to be more consistent at, at church attendance. I'm going to be more consistent at taking care of myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do these things better in my life. We have made these, these resolutions, these commitments, these goals. Tell you what, I made one. So I, I have one that, and I, I think I shared this like two years ago. I want to learn another language. 
I just want to learn another language. I want to learn Spanish. I, I just wish I could speak Spanish. I wish I could speak Spanish fluently. And I had this goal. for It's going on. It's about eight years now that I've had this goal. This is the year. This is the year I am going to learn how to speak Spanish. I even went and took a Spanish class about three or four years ago. That's good. I took one class on how to speak Spanish. Of course, they just spent the whole time talking about the alphabet. And nobody ever taught me a word. Okay, but anyway. So I went to this. And then I thought, oh, have you ever heard of Rosetta Stone? It's like this, this greatest way to learn another foreign language. It's, it's just a great system of learning. So I spend a couple hundred bucks... Why? Because I'm going to learn how to speak Spanish. So I spend a couple hundred bucks, and I get this Rosetta Stone, and I put it in the tape, cassette, disc, whatever it is, player. And uh, I learned all about how to speak Spanish. But to this day, I'm trying to think of a Spanish word. I can't even think of one. <laughs> okay. I, I, it, to this day, I, I don't know how to speak Spanish. And, and you know what? Listen, if you're like that, I want to just tell you right now, don't get too discouraged because you're not alone. I'm, I'm not alone. This is not like just one story from me. As a matter of fact, this is a fact. This is, this is like a, a survey has been done. And the average American who makes resolutions, 45% of us adults will make resolutions. Out of, out of all of us that do... The average will make the same resolution for 10 years before they give up. Think about that. For 10 years. And I got one more year to go, and I'm giving up. You know, so that's it. I'm at about year eight, nine, and so I can just give up after that. For 10 years. Is that you? Now, don't tell anybody next to you, but have you made the same resolution every year for 10 years, and you're still making the same one because you haven't done it for that long? They say... There's only an 8% success rate. 8%. That's 8 out of every 100 people who make this commitment to themselves. Only 8 out of 100 make it. They achieve it. And, and you know what? Sometimes you think, well, maybe it's not important enough. Even, and listen to this. This is going to blow your mind. It blew my mind when I, when I discovered this. That out of all of the heart attack patients in the United States... All the people who have had a heart attack in the United States and lived or survived through it, only 14% of them have made long-lasting changes to their diet or exercise. 14%. And that's a serious thing. You've had a heart attack. It, okay? It's a very dangerous, serious thing. And only 14% has made any kind of a change, a long-lasting change in their life. Don't you just feel like a loser? You feel like quitting? Listen, this series that we're doing right now, this Progress on Purpose, this series, and I want to encourage you to stay for all four weeks of this series because I believe that you and I can break these. As a matter of fact, I believe, I believe this with all my heart. I'm really, really into this, that this series is going to help us actually make results this year in our life. I believe that this year can be the very best year of our life. I do. And, I, and you know what? I know we can accomplish it, and I know we can do it. And we're going to spend four weeks kind of guiding us through this process using some biblical you know, advice, some biblical principles that you and I can break this chain in our life, that we can be better, that this will be a better year in our life, that we will accomplish some of these goals, some of these dreams, some of these wants that we want for our life to be bigger, to be better in our lives. And I really believe we can. And through this whole series, I'm going to kind of talk about what I believe are, are kind of the main really the main things in our life, the main areas of our life. We kind of got a list of them here, of these things in our life. Now, you might have different ones, and that's fine with you. I mean, if you do, and you can use what we're going to talk about in these four weeks for whatever it is that you want to change in your life. But I, I believe uh, that, and, and we, we put this list in this order because we really believe that this is the order in which, the order of importance in our lives to help us accomplish these things in our life. Now, it doesn't mean that if you want to just, you know, do financial stuff this year, you want to be better, you can do it without doing these other things, but these other things will work for you. These things can work against you accomplishing this, and so it's kind of down the line 
divine in, in importance. But as we're looking at this list, to just think, think for yourself, which area of that do you want improvement in your life this year? And I, and I believe that there's only six up here because we could actually do a little bit in all six of these areas. We could, you do any more than that, and you're probably going to fail at all of them. But I think we can accomplish you know, up to six things in our life this year that we can make a difference, that we will succeed, and we will actually make it to be spiritually, hey, to be closer to God than I've ever been before. To actually be able to learn how to be guided by the Holy Spirit in my life. I believe we can. To make physical changes. And, you know, the, did you know the number one um, uh, commitment people make, what, resolution that people make, number one is to lose weight. Number one. And you know what's really funny? It's number one every year. You know, every year it's number, number one. I believe we can make a difference. I know that we can. You and I, even if you've never done it before, I know that we're going to give you the tools to be able to do this. And relational. To be, to be closer in your relationships and to be better uh, intellectually, to grow. I mean, I, I think this is one of the things that I, I, I work with one of the most genius. I mean, Shaheen's a genius, right? He's smart. Sometimes I'm going, man, I need to be smarter if I'm going to be around him, you know? Like, he's so smart. I want, I want to grow in, intellectually, you know, learn more. In your profession, whatever you, whatever you do, whatever you do for a job, that this year you could, you could like, hey, I'm going to grow in my profession. I am going to move up. I'm going to accomplish more. I'm going to be more set in our financial future. And I, I believe those are it. But listen, today I'm going to start out this series with two things. These two things are crucial for us being successful. And we'll get into more detail as we go through. But I want to start with these two areas of our life. And... It is true across the board. These are principles that are, are true, that work. We can't ignore them. We really have to kind of follow this. This is how it works. And the first one is this. The first one is you and I, when we set a goal, when we want to make a change, we have to count the cost. You can't just wish. You have to count the cost. It's going to change your lifestyle. You can't be smarter, can't learn more, can't be closer to God, can't, and not change anything in your life. You're never going to be more healthy if you don't change something in your life. You guys, this, this is elementary, it's basic, but we can't accomplish things without this. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells a really, I mean, Jesus' teaching on this is, is huge and it's extremely important. He's obviously talking about our spiritual development, but it works for everything. And listen to what Jesus himself says. He says, Is there anyone here who planning to build a new house doesn't first sit down and figure the cost so you'll know if you can complete it or not? Com complete it? If you only get the foundation laid and, and run out of money, you're going to look pretty foolish. Everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He started something that he couldn't finish. He goes on. Or can you imagine a king going into battle against another king without first deciding whether it is possible with his 10,000 troops to face the 20,000 troops of the other? And if he decides that he can't, won't he send an, an emissary and work out a truce? Simply put, if you're not willing to take what is dearest to you, whether plans or people, and kiss it goodbye, you can't be my disciple. Basically what Jesus is saying is this. If you want something to change in your life, and it can be if you want to be closer to God, if you want to you know, have more money management, if you want to be more successful, more whatever it is, if you want to change something in your life, you have to first count the cost. And, and I, I hope that even over the next few weeks that you and I will really decide where we want to go this year and we'll start by counting the cost. Because, see, Rosetta Stone is a great program to learn how to speak Spanish or any foreign language. But you don't just put it in and now you know. You know what, we, we see that we live in this culture that you and I are so, we're so bombarded with this idea that 
I don't have to change my lifestyle. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to be committed. I'll just take a pill and I'll lose weight. I love those commercials. You'll lose weight with no exercise and no diet. Like, really? You know, what are you putting poison in your life and you're slowly dying? Is that you'll lose weight when you're dying? I, I mean, really? Come on, we got to count the cost. There is a cost that it's going to cost us. And look at our list. Listen, I know so many of us have wanted to grow spiritually. We have. Maybe you have wanted to grow spiritually for the last four or five years, but you're unwilling to pay the cost, the price, the life change that it's going to take to grow spiritually, to hear God, to know what God's, to experience God's power and presence in your life. Because you can't just keep living. None of us can. We can't just keep going on like we do and just think, yep, I'm just going to get more spiritual this year. Well, what is it going to cost us to get more spiritual? Well, you know, I'd get more involved. You know, the church tells me that I should attend church regularly. I should be a part of a small group. I should get involved. I should invite others. That's what the church tells me. But I don't have time. I don't have time to do that. Maybe you've thought that. You don't have time. You've got to count the cost. You're not going to grow spiritually without investing the time. You're not going to. And you know what? It's just a wish. Every one of us can grow spiritually and really get close to God. We can. We can feel God moving in our life. We can. But it's going to cost us some time. We're going to have to say no to something else in our life. That's just a fact. I know we don't like to hear that. I know it's tough. I, I, I know that we don't want to sometimes. But if you want to grow spiritually... You're going to have to say no to some other things. You're going to have to change your lifestyle. Hey, it's no different with physical. Listen, if, if you want to be in better health, many of us could use this. If we want to be in better health, there's no, there's no lack of wanting. We all want to be in better health, but we have to count the cost. Well, I don't have time to go exercise, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't have the, the resources to eat more healthy. I don't, all these excuses, listen, fine, then, then don't. But if you want to, you have to be willing to pay the price. There is a cost to you and I gaining these things in our life. And we, we have to count the cost that, you know what, listen, there's no way around this. You're going to have to change your lifestyle. I, I look at this no different. All of us do. I have to change my daily schedule. I have to change what I do. I have to change my lifestyle if I want change in my life. And, and it's just uh, relational. You know what? It's, well, I just wish I had better relationships. I don't have time to really work on being with my kids. I don't have time to spend with my wife. I don't have time. Then you have to change something. Because this isn't going to happen with time. Time isn't the answer. It's what is it going to cost us intellectually. I mean, I'd love to read a book a month. I would just love to read a book a month. But uh, I don't have time. No, it's not interesting to me. It's going to cost you something. Take the time. I believe for every one of these you know, uh, to be in your, in your career, in your job. Well, I don't have time to stay late and study things. I don't have time to go to another class and maybe, maybe get another degree or whatever. Uh, financial, I don't, I don't have enough money to have financial freedom in my life. I don't, then you got to make some changes. Listen, I'm not telling you what you need to value in your life. That's up to you. But I am telling you something that you cannot run from. And that is that if you don't count the cost before you enter something, before you try to make your life better, you're just going to go into another year where nothing changes. Nothing is going to change unless you and I are willing to count the cost, pay the price, put in the work. There's no simple way. There's no other way it's going to. But, but here's the good news. If we put in the work, if we give the time, if we do the sacrifice that it takes, our lives will be better at the end of this year than it is today. That we will be 
we will be more satisfied, more complete. We will have these things we want. We will be happier, better people because of the investment of our time, energy, effort, or whatever it is that it's going to take. We, we will be better. That was the first thing. Count the cost. The second thing is this. We have to be accountable. We have to be. Think about how many times you've made a resolution or you've made a decision in your life, this is what I want to do, and you've never asked anybody to keep you accountable to that. You just put it off the next day, the next day, and there's nobody asking you. Hey, I, I thought you said, you know, you told me, you told me to ask you, hey, how are you doing on your book reading? Hey, how, how are you doing uh, on your uh, diet and your exercise? How are you doing and you're spending time with God and learning the Bible? And how are, you, how are you doing on these things? And when we don't have anybody holding us accountable, then we're not going to accomplish. I mean, for the most part, when we hit a, a rough spot, when we feel like we don't have, can't make that sacrifice, we, do, we just quit. And nobody's getting after us. Inside, inside, we're discouraged with ourselves. Inside, we're not happy with ourselves. Inside, we start feeling bad about ourselves. But nobody's there to really help us. And I think the best person, matter of fact, I know the best person to ask to hold us accountable is God himself. Can God do that? Yeah, he can, if you ask him to. In other words, if you and I make a commitment in our life, if we say, I want to make this better in my life, include God in it and talk to God about it. Because when we get times of discouraged, God will encourage. When we get times where we're defeated, God will give us strength. God will work with us. And, you know, the, just a great, there's a few biblical examples of this, but just a great one, and, and maybe you're not familiar with the story, maybe some of you are, but when the children of Israel, when the nation of Israel was, they had left Egypt in, you know, in, in slavery, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, now they were going into the promised land, the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised them to go, and Joshua was the leader to lead this nation into a land that there was a lot of adversaries. This was not going to be easy. This was going to be extremely, extremely difficult. There were going to be times of victory, and there were going to be times of defeat. There's going to be times of, of really, you know, questioning whether we should do this or not. And listen, this is what God told Joshua. He says, have I not commanded you? I love that word. I've commanded you, be strong and courageous. I have commanded you to be strong and and courageous, okay? You don't give up. You don't get weak. You stay strong. And he says, do not be afraid. Afraid of failure. Afraid of, you know, what other people might think. Do not be discouraged. Now, you will have opportunity, but don't go there. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I really believe, I know that he was talking to Joshua during this, but I really believe that it, just through the other, other parts of the Bible that we know that God is commanding us in the very same way. God is saying, I am for you. I am working for you. I want you to win. I will be on your side. When you face times of discouragement, come to me. I will be there and I will strengthen you and I will guide you. Uh, you know what? I, I will give you strength. I will help you in these times. Because I will be with you in your journey if you ask me to. I will be with you in your journey for each one of us. And I hope that through this series that you and I will end up making some really good commitments to ourselves and to God that this year is going to be better than any other year we've had. That my hope and prayer, and a matter of fact, I just know this is going to happen, even in my own life. That this year, I am going to fulfill and finish and, 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 and be successful at some things that I've only wished for for years. But we have to count the cost, and we have to be accountable, and I believe to God. So when you and I are thinking about this, here's where I want us all to go, and that is to this, God, to really talk to God, God. This is where I want to be. 
I want to know you more. I want to have a closer relationship. I want to manage my money. I want whatever it is. And God, I want to do it with you. There will be times I will feel like not going to exercise. There will be times that I feel like not talking to that person. There will be times I do not want to read that book. There will be times that I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be in a small group. There will be times we will go through these things. And everyone, when we face those times, to commit ourselves to partnering with God, to say, God, help me right now because I don't want to. God, give me strength to exercise. Give me strength to not eat a bucket of ice cream. Please. And call on God for that strength because God is always with us. Listen, God is with you. God will strengthen you. He will. God will help. But we have to include him. Hey, God, you help me right now. I'm weak. God, you right now, you give me encouragement. Lord, I'm afraid. God, give give me confidence. Be with me. Get me through. So I can accomplish these things. This list that we have. This list. Between now and next week, I want to ask every one of you, and I'm going to ask you not to miss a week. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it will make a difference in our lives. That this week, I want you to be thinking about these areas. When you come back next Sunday, I'm going to help you learn what we're going to do with these goals that we've planned. You know, where do we go from here? But first, this week, here's your homework, is decide maybe, maybe something in every one of these areas, or maybe one or two areas One or two things that I am serious about. I want to change in one of these areas. I want to see growth in my life. I don't want to be the same that I was last year or the year before. And we come back. We're going to learn how. From God's word, we're going to learn how to accomplish and be successful in these areas that we face in our life. But remember these two things. Even as you're thinking about this list in your own life. Think about these two things. You have to count the cost. Nothing happens when time goes by, except time goes by. Count the cost and partner with God. Partner with God. It will make a difference in our lives. I'd like to just end it today just by praying for us all. Let's bow our heads. Father, I'm so glad that you care about us enough that you really did put in your word, it's part of your principles, part of who you are, that we would accomplish things in our life, that we would get better in our life, that we would grow in our life, that we don't have to stay stagnant in areas that are important to us. The busyness of life doesn't have to rob from us the valuable things of life that we want in our life. And Father, I pray right now, right, right now that you would be working with us all the way through next week, Lord, that, that you would help us decide in what area do we really want to make growth this year. And help us, Father, to be confident and know that you will be with us. You will make a difference and you will bring us to victory in our lives if we allow you to. And Lord, I just, right now I allow you to come into this process of even deciding what this year will bring, deciding what we want this year. Be a part of the process now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.